more and more states in the U.S. are now turning to casinos as a way to raise revenue. So what they're doing is they're building brand new casinos, encouraging their citizens to go gamble at those casinos. And in states like Massachusetts, they're building three new casinos that are estimated to make uh, $1.5 to $2 billion a year. So they can expect $400 million a year in revenue be fr from taxing them, right? Um, so this is their way of closing budget gaps. By of encouraging course. people to gamble. Of, of course, of course. Look, I remember when I was growing up, and the only two places you can gamble were Atlantic City and Vegas. That's it. That was it. And then the uh, Native Americans figured out, let, let's uh, rob the white man back, mm -hmm. okay, for all the money they took from us. Uh, they came up with a loophole. Uh, the story behind how those casinos got built, et cetera, is amazing. But anyway, so they started. And the next thing you know, everybody's looking around going, wait, why are we letting the Indians make all the money, okay? Uh, so next thing you know, Detroit's like, yeah, screw that, we're doing casinos. New Orleans's like, yeah, yeah, screw that, we're doing casinos. And next thing you know, everybody's doing casinos. And people don't even remember why we didn't do casinos. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Because that's yeah. like an old school thing of morality, like gambling's wrong. But like, we've forgotten that. You yeah, know? we have forgotten that. In fact, back in 2007, Americans gambled away $92 billion. I, I think actually that's, I'm surprised at how low that is. Billion dollars. Yeah, I, ninety-two I billion dollars. I Americans be gambled high. away. I mean, the, the, and look, they're targeting people who don't have money to gamble away anyway. And it's going to be disastrous because these people should be using their, uh, if they have disposable income at all, they should use it to reinvest in their businesses or maybe invest in a new business. That would be great for the economy. But no, they're not thinking about that. They're just thinking we got to find something to tax. Let's tax the casinos. Right. Um, well, so. The, you know, the old school objection to casinos came from the right wing, you know, religious conservatives. Now, new school objection to casinos is from progressives who say, God, I mean, these poor people, uh, you're taking what little money they have and, like, is there anything, like, less appealing than get, get, have, making casino owners richer and taking from the poor and the middle class? It's kind of a redistribution of wealth in a lot of ways, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but either way, it's la bulldozer. There's no way, man, casinos are going to be everywhere. I'm shocked that they aren't already everywhere. Like, there's no casino in L.A. What? That's crazy. That's the craziest thing I ever it's heard. It's an hour and a half away. That's close enough. And there is a casino in L.A., isn't it? No, those, they don't let you play real blackjack. And they're, like, the seediest things in the world. Yeah, there's, like, guys with, like, missing teeth and, like, and you're at the, at, you feel like, I, I go there sometimes to play poker. I haven't gone in a while, but I, I love poker. I go to play. These, these guys, they're like sweaty toothed madmen, and you feel like someone at the table vomited within the last 24 hours. That's disgusting. Like, I'm positive of it, right? And, and somebody at the table is in the middle of a criminal act as we speak. I don't know what it is, but it's a criminal act, okay? It's like the worst place on earth. We gotta get some decent casinos in LA. Uh, I'm sorry, I meant we shouldn't do casinos. There actually is a casino about an hour, hour and a half outside of uh, LA. Morongo, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so Anna asked, how come, or JR asked, how come they're in the same state and it's allowed? And it's obviously because of tribal sovereignty. And, uh, and we've got an expert on the line about that. Uh, so what does tribal sovereignty mean? What do you think tribal sovereignty means in the, tri in the 21st century? And how do we resolve conflicts between tribes and the federal and state governments? Yeah. Uh, tribal sovereignty means that. It's sovereign. Yeah. I mean, you're a, you're a, You've been given sovereignty, and you're viewed as a sovereign entity. Okay. And therefore, the relationship between the federal government and tribes is one between sovereign entities. <laughs> Were people laughing in that clip? Yes, oh. they laughed at him, man. They literally laughed at him. That's amazing. My second favorite part of that clip is, yeah. 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 <laughs> Before they answer. <laughs>